What's up guys, today I wanna to talk about affordable film gear that actually had a huge impact on my filmmaking career. And I wanna start by saying, I am a firm believer that you do not need, and I repeat, you do not need really expensive gear to tell great stories. This right here is the first thing that I wanna talk about. This little adhesive circle right here completely changed my life. And it is only 20 bucks for like a pack of 90. And I'm gonna tell you exactly what you use these for. Over the years of my filmmaking career, I have had a hell of a time making sure that the lav mic is either A, not seen, or B, doesn't fall off or get rustled around in a shirt and makes a bunch of noise. It has been a serious hassle for me. But these little bad boys right here has made laving somebody up extremely easy. I'm gonna show you how to do this in five seconds, you ready? Well, not actually five seconds. I don't, I don't mean actually five seconds, but forget cutting the B-roll. I'm just gonna show you guys right here. So I peeled off that first part, right? I take this lav mic and I stick it right here, right there in the middle, okay? Boom, it's in the middle. I go like that and I just peel it off and boom you have this little sticky side, right? You could take this little sticky side and you put it right up into somebody's shirt and you flatten it out. And now, number one, this mic is not going anywhere. I can go like this all day long, it is staying there. And I have had such a problem, number one, hiding the mic in the past, and number two, making sure that it doesn't move around or rustle at all. And because it's stuck right there in between the shirt and the chest, it's not going anywhere. There's nowhere for it to move. So you automatically enhance the audio production and you hide the mic, which just looks aesthetically pleasing. I hate that that little clip. Where's that little bastard clip? Whatever, it's somewhere in here. I hate the way the, the clip looks when it sticks out of the shirt. That pisses me off more than anything. I know it's not that big of a deal, but to me, it's a big deal. I'm telling you guys for 20 bucks, these little Ursa circle sticky things are amazing. I'm gonna leave all of the links to all of this stuff in the comments down below, so check that out. The next thing that I wanna talk about, it's a little small rig tool and it's about 20 bucks. It comes with a flat head, a Phillips, and different sized Allen keys. So anything that I need to tighten or screw in, I could just use that bad boy. Definitely check it out, especially if you don't already have something like this. I'm gonna tell you guys about my favorite piece of gear on this list, and that is this little bad boy right here. This is an Aperture MC, and this thing is so valuable. So far, I have used it on every single shoot that I've gone on for background lights, for practical lights. You could take these little things and you could replace these inside of a light bulb. I just take the light bulb out of a lamp, put these right at the top of a lamp and boom, you're good to go. The best thing about these is that the battery lasts forever. You can charge them. They have a magnet on the back of it. If you have like a piece of metal, you could put it on the top of a car. In fact, I'm using one of these right now as a hair light. Right around here, you could see the light. That's coming from this little Aperture MC just on a C stand. And if you can't afford another really expensive light for your hair light, if you just put this on the, on the top of a C stand, you could actually Actually use this thing as a hair light I wouldn't recommend it all the time but for little quick productions this thing is amazing which brings me to the next two pieces of gear and the first one that I want to talk about is tape 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 and I have two types of tape and I think that every filmmaker should have two types of tape number one gaff tape everybody knows about gaff tape but gaff tape is awesome because it's extremely strong extremely sticky actually on this Lavaca project I ordered a boom stand from a rental company and the boom stand didn't come with like a mic mount so what I did was I, I literally took the gaff tape and I taped the mic around and it was stuck there. I've used it for holding flags up. I've used it for holding all kinds of stuff up. And the next type of tape that I wanna talk about is paper tape or painter's tape. And the reason why you want this type of tape is because you can't put gaff tape on walls. Do not try to put gaff tape on walls. You will rip the paint off of a wall. I have been in a client's house before. I've put gaff tape on their wall, took off the gaff tape and took some paint along with it. And yeah, I did. So don't be an asshole. Use painter's tape or paper tape. I use this to mark my C-stands and my tripods with it, or I'll take this and I'll just make sure that if my cords are laying on the ground, I'll like tape my cords down so they don't move. That way nobody trips on them. Really important investment, both pretty inexpensive, but both very, very valuable on set. And once you have them, you're gonna realize how much 
use that you're gonna have for them. The next piece of gear really took my cinematography to the next level and that was a C-stand. Technically, you can't really get a decent C-stand for under 100 bucks. You can find one on Amazon for like $106, but trust me, when I tell you a good C stand as a documentary filmmaker is mandatory. I use C stands for almost every single shoot that I go on. And the main thing that I use them for is a hair light. Now, when I first started my career, I didn't use the hair light. I didn't think it made that much of a difference. But as I developed my filmmaking and as I, I started getting further in my career, I realized that by using the hair light, you separate the subject from the background. You outline them, causing a little bit more depth to the shot. It is a huge tool. And if you guys want to learn more, more about lighting techniques, check out this link right here where I break down key light, the hair light, every kind of light that you would need as a documentary filmmaker. So when you guys get a chance and you can afford it, go out and get a C-stand and start experimenting with using a hair light. Now, my last piece of gear that I'm gonna talk about is paired up with the C-stand, and that is a sandbag. In my Lavaca project that I just shot, we didn't have any sand, so we had to like makeshift sandbags, and I realized how important they actually are, and that's why I wanted to put them on the list. You can get a pack of like six on Amazon for like 40 bucks or something, and trust me when I tell you, it will make a difference when you're trying to rig things up and you have really top heavy lights and they're leaning over and you gotta like figure out a way to rig them to make sure that they don't fall. It's just a pain in the ass, man. Go out, spend the money, get sandbags and make sure that you are keeping your equipment safe. That is it for today, guys. Let me know if you have any questions regarding gear or anything on the list that I gave you guys today. My name is Alex Arfati. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.